Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Expanse. My name is Ryan, also known as Agent R, and today is going to be an interesting one. Uh, the last episode was absolutely insane. Um, Naomi, possibly dead. A lot of you in the comments really made sure that I understood that uh, you technically can survive in space for some amount of time, let's say under 90 seconds. Um, Mo the thing that was not going to get you was the freezing or the heat, but mostly the, the the unfiltered radiation makes a lot of sense. I missed the burning effect. I thought that was more like a, I almost thought it was like a freezing thing where it's like if they were far away from a sun, but like if they were relatively close again, because there's no atmosphere, like it just, it's uninhibited, it just goes right through um, and travels for, you know, light years basically, I, or not light years, but like, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of kilometers. Um, Anyways, a lot of stuff had happened. Uh, we got to see a lot of Marco's manipulation, and it, it feels like you, you see it a lot with, you know, Naomi is right, you know? And sadly, with Philip, he was too far gone. There was no shot that Naomi coming in for the first time in his life, really, is going to influence him over the, you know, 18 years of work, if you will, that Marco has put into molding Philip to be like him and it, it is interesting to kind of see you saw it also with um sin was that that guy's name you saw it when marco interacted with him also where there is this like blatant narcissism he has for himself very very self-centered uh as one could expect but um yeah there was also the really sick space battle we got to have uh, that sadly ended in uh, the Zamiya blowing itself up. And I can only guess that's because um, Marco had given them orders not to allow Holden to get a hold of A, the proto Marco, or B, any flight plans or stuff they might have. You guys had pointed out, someone pointed out in the comments about the, um, about that there was a missile that went not to this, to, toward like the, um, the Rosinante, but had a different plume or something or other that I totally missed. Um, I'm sure I'll probably find out in this episode, so or hopefully in this episode I'll find out pretty quick what, what that's about. Um, but other than that, I kind of just immediately want to know what happens to Naomi. I don't think she's going to die, but irreparable damage? That's still on the table. But yeah, if you guys stuck around this long, really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope you guys uh, enjoy seeing um, you know, The Expanse and others. I'm doing Ted Lasso in addition to this, so give it some love if you haven't already. But if you guys are ready, I'm ready. I'll see you in the video. Don't do this. No! Yeah, this was... The whole scene was insanity. Well, back to the main character. <laughs> Jeez. What are we gonna do when we get to Baltimore? I don't know exactly. Safest place for us that I could think of. I don't know though. Didn't that guy say he would kill Amos if they saw him next? We need to get out of here. I saw a suborbital ship flying when we were on the road. But do you know where we might find a ship? It'd be really hard for us to get there by ourselves. Hmm. Yeah, I'm still skeptical. Still, still skeptical about Amos getting back to Baltimore. Eric did say he would kill him the next time he was in Baltimore. Um, I can only assume that's because he, like, is supposed to be dead. And he, he does understand that Amos would probably take him over if it was like, well, it's the best thing for me. So he's like, hey, look, I gotta do what I gotta do and I'll kill you to survive type deal. But I don't know. I don't like it. We have no real plan. We're going to Baltimore. I mean, I mean, hell, to be... We don't really have any... We don't really have anywhere else to go. Um, but... I guess we'll see. Brother, you were there at the beginning. And you were supposed to be there at the end. Tell me how your mother died. She went after her, but she opened the door and went outside. She didn't have to kill Sin. She didn't kill him, you did. Excuse me? Damn, dude. 
Marco might end up pushing Philip away. Philip's getting old enough to start thinking for himself a little bit, I think, and maybe start making his own decisions. Let's go. She's alive. I don't know how good that is because, oh, man, she looks bad. Oh, my God. That must be agony. Oh, man. Why is her hand puffy? Expansion of blood in the hand, maybe? Or, 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 or build up a fluid or something? The whole thing is rigged to blow. God, her eye looks bad. Oh, they're using her to lure him with that fake message. No. The tight beam back sky we picked up was probably a communication with Marco. Orders to destroy the sample and not to be captured. And it's a job for us. Fine by me. That's what I thought. Good thinking. We salvage. This is what we do. We're not salvagers. We're scavengers. Marco kills those who defy him and we pick the bodies clean. <sighs> what is she thinking? Yeah, you can try and sit in drummer's chair? Or is that is that drummer's chair? Probably, yeah. Metako Belaya got the same offer to join the Free Navy as you did. They declined. Marco let them go in peace. And then they hijacked two skiffs out of Ceres, loyal to us. We protect our allies and destroy our enemies. We must feed and protect the belt. Ah, uh, but there's the distinction. It's not the belt. It's Marco's idea of the belt. It's the people that are loyal to Marco. The Free Navy. It's not the belt. Again, has nothing to do with the belt. It's I want to make my faction from the belters. It's so like, it's so like we get to see it now from like the ground floor. From the, in the beginning, we got to see it with like the factions of everybody kind of moving off into their own things or, or having already established group. The Martians, the belters with maybe some different factions that were all ununited and then the earthers and that kind of thing. And now we're seeing like from the inside, the fact like this, this, earth mars opa type deal forming from the ground up it's all it's all the same to be honest citizens of earth and luna my name is david pastor former secretary general christian of Asurala and admiral felix delgado were directly responsible for enabling our forces to beat back the attacks this is the beginning of the reckoning and this journey will not end until we are victorious the future of this planet, the future of humanity, demands it! Pretty good speech. boy, Mr. Pastor. They saw the leader they needed to see. Now we just have to make good on what I said. <laughs> such, such is being a leader, is it not? <laughs> say, say what you need to, you need to say and, and say what needs to be, get done with conviction and passion and then just, you know, gotta make that happen. <laughs> Oh, is this Eric's place? Oh, I completely forgot about the henchman lady. Yeah, it is. I'm not about to tuck tail and run just because some belter fuckstick throws a couple of rocks. Rocks aren't your problem. Everything else down there is. And I'm dealing with that. I carved my place out of the fucking skin of Baltimore. I know what it's like to lose everything. I knew this woman once. Fellow royalty? No, fellow inmate. She killed her children, all five of them. She talked about them like they were still alive. Like when she got up the next morning, they'd still be there. I know they're dead, but I know I'm dead too. You're the only bitch in here who thinks she's still alive. As soon as she said that, I knew the person I was is dead. Starting over isn't always bad. Huh. So are you, you in? Good. It's a long trip. I saw a case of that tequila that maybe we should take some of that. It's in, it, it, it is interesting now that, if you think about it, the, the dichotomy between the skills that Amos had in, the, in, the, in about an episode or two ago, about two episodes ago, where the skills that he had helped them survive, and then now Clarissa almost appealing to the humanity in people is the one thing that Amos has really never been able to understand or be able to do is the thing that's getting them through this, or at least so far. 
it's very interesting how they're doing that where this tandem is not just him protecting her i like how they're having it be now that she's like the fog has been lifted in a way where just like how the fog was lifted with amos where him realizing that he has to make his own decisions and also then realizing that self-reliance and and being cold and callous can get only get you so far at some point the morality and humanness human openness or whatever is going to be useful in survival and clarissa is almost like the other side of the coin very cool at least from a writing standpoint i think that's how i'm interpreted anyway we seem to be waiting for Anaros to make his next move instead of us making our first one. Our citizens need to see that we can apply pressure. How can we flush him out? We cut him off at the knees. It's interesting that Christian seems very surprised by this. Either A, that she was not aware of this, or B, that they had they were not supposed to mention this yet. Interesting. Palace Station is the one I think we should focus on. Can you give us an estimate of how many are actual Anaros loyalists? We believe it's a high percentage, but it's a hard number to assess. This is no different than the strike on Deimos. That was a bold move, and it was the right move. But Deimos was an entirely different situation. Deimos was a military base. Palace is not. Our operation centers in Pittsburgh and Syracuse are both reporting six... Interesting that, look, they're maybe not on the same page, or maybe they are, and this is part of the planning i don't know why it would be but that'd be interesting like a little good cop good cop bad cop i don't know why that would be a thing i don't know what the end game for that would be but i don't know brainstorming the thoughts here she needs to cut that off She's probably going to have to, like, she should probably put it around her body and then use that. <laughs> what is she doing? I don't know what she's trying to get at. I didn't, I didn't see what that was. Oh, a tool. Oh, really smart? Really smart? Oh, was that the transmitter? Shit. What the hell are we going to do? Maybe she can try tampering with the, the bombs. I mean, shit, at this point, what else are we going to do? Is it just me? Do you guys find it so interesting how, from a prop basis, they made all of that stuff? Like how they made this whole thing? It's so interesting. How they came up with the, like, to make it look certain ways and feel real and feel, like, lived in and stuff. It's so amazing to me. Oh, my God. Is she going out again? What is she doing? Okay, she only has a limited amount of time. Wait, what did she get? Did she cut, she cut one of them off? A new, a new transistor or a new transmitter? I guess just some wiring. <clears throat> wow. My name is Naomi Nagata. <laughs> the Chetsamoka is a bomb. There are tampering sensors on the nav controls and the thrusters. Okay. Good thing she didn't mess the with that. The proximity detonator has been set. I repeat, do not approach this ship. Oh my god, she's just... She's just stranded. She's just stranded in a bomb where she has to basically sit in there and tell people to not come near and save her, basically. Like, how the hell? I mean, I guess they could be able to send supplies somehow. I, I don't know what the proximity is for the switch to go off, but... Oh. Why are you being like this? Like what? We made the decision together. It was the right one. I know. If we had said no to Marco, someone else would be salvaging this ship and looking at our dead bodies. We are still together. We will get through this. I'm not sure I can. Does she mean she can't, like, with her, like, get through this together? Or does she mean, like, she's not gonna, she's not going to get through this? Um. I'm gonna scan the emergency channels. Any ships the Free Navy attacks will send out on Mayday. Might help narrow our search here. Maybe they find Naomi? 
we don't find Naomi soon, we're gonna need to make a pit stop and resupply it. Hygiene. Foreshadowing. Holy shit. There's no way to tell if any of these ships are in our Wait, did she find it or no? Captain, we just got a message from the Razorback. Okay. Jim, we just picked up an automated distress call on one of the emergency channels. It's Naomi. We found her. Oh no, it might be the bad one. No! Shit! Oh my god, no. I don't know what the time was between that and when she finally got it fixed. You wanted to see me, sir. My job is to present options to you, sir. That's all. Speak your mind. The Belter struck our home. We need to strike back at theirs. The Naros deliberately targeted our citizens. Now he's using his own people as human shields. That's true. We're all going to have blood on our hands before this is over. Well, if it's more of theirs, I'll take it. <sighs> That's heavy. That'll be all. Shit, I mean, he, he he does make a good point, and this is the problem with morality. God, I hate... <laughs> this is why I was no good at philosophy, either. Just a mocha. This is Alex Kamal on the Razorback. Naomi, we heard your call. We are burning hard for you now. Y'all just hang on. No. Shit. I mean, she got that pretty quick, though. What is she thinking? What is she doing? I do not like this. I would like to be clear. I do not like this at all. Okay. Atmospheric pressure. 101 KPA. What does this have to do with anything? Is it for time? Oh, she's, she's using it as a timer. Oh, is she using it to turn off each individual one? Oh my god. Naomi, you freaking beast. Yo. <sighs> Naomi, let's go. You got this. <laughs> Jesus. We picked up a distress call. You from Naomi Nagata. Set a course for that ship. You can't help her. Watch me. Naomi is not about that ship. How would you know? Because she's dead. Interesting. You are a liar. I don't care if you believe me. The truth is Naomi Nagata was a traitor to the belt. And now she's dead. Fashengi Marina! Ooh, this is tough. I don't know. I'm with Kamina. Some shit's about to go down. Everyone's trying to stay out of the fight, and it is not going to work this way. You can't sit here and be like, oh, let's all be friends. Let's all just put our heads down, and it'll blow over. World War freaking three is, is literally happening. You're not going to be able to just sit back, and they're literally going to go to series and telling you to fight people. And yet you're like, oh, we'll shoot this chick that's on our ship out of anger. I understand it's probably not the right choice. However, the idea of doing nothing on a more general sense is... It's not going to work for much longer. Also, I'm kind of with Kamina. I am boiling inside. <laughs> come on, Naomi. Come on, come on. Come on, Naomi. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, 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 no. Come on. Wait, she found it? What was she looking for? Wait, is she turning it on and off like Morse code? That's, if that's what she's doing, that's brilliant. Naomi, please, 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 come on. Come on, come on, come on. I, that's triumphant music. I Hopefully that's good. I, I'm pretty sure it was Morse code is my guess. Sorry about what happened earlier. Drama's famous temper. This chick needs to be taken down a peg or two. She's so high and mighty. What is it? This dress code just stopped. What's it supposed to? Distress. Why did the message change? Could someone be on the ship? Could it be Niall? It can't be. It's impossible. She's dead. Tell James Holden I am in control. Not gonna let it end that way. I gotta hear I wanna hear that message again. Tell James Holden I'm in control. This is Naomi 
Nagata. James Holden, I'm in. Control. Wow. Oh my god, she's so smart. It wasn't Morse code. She changed the message. I had thought about it, but I was like, maybe it's something else. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, that is so, so clever. Wow. That's awesome. Let's just hope it works. I mean, Alex and them are already on their way, so like, shit. But it's, it's probably too late. I mean, maybe Drummer gets involved and... Man, 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 man. Super interesting. And then even, even on top of that, we have the, the Earthers and the Admiral with Pastor now having to make a decision to blow up Palace Station. And if that happens, I wonder if maybe the plan all along is to have that kind of an event, like push Earth to initiate it, right? So you can really rally everybody. Instead of trying to slowly garner everybody to your cause, you just basically manufacture an event to push everybody to your side. And then you can almost get the Martians involved and like get everyone against the Earthers, that'd be interesting. I mean, I don't know why, because it's still against the Inners in general, but like Mars is kind of out of the picture with this for the most part. And they're, they haven't really been at all involved in, in terms of on a public level, right? Which is interesting. A lot of behind the scenes stuff going on, but I wonder how they factor into the plan here, but we'll see. Very interesting. Yeah, I don't really have much. Um, I just know that the way this was shot was amazing. The physical effects and the props and even the staging they had for stuff was fantastic. I mean, get, like the corridors and the physical layouts of stuff was really cool. Having everything look, feel, uh, lived in and, and, and used. So cool. The prosthetics and stuff, the makeup was amazing. It's it, I love how they're making it feel like upping the tension and it's not just the same stuff you know what i mean and kind of utilizing the human element a little bit more with this now right i like that it's away from the alien part of it now and it's 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 more on the human side and it's almost a little scarier from in terms of like adapting instead of using something that we don't understand in this case you do understand the problem is <laughs> because you understand it makes it scary right you know what they what they would almost be capable of or what they they think that or, or you think what they're capable of, and they might surprise you, and that's probably the scarier thing, right? To be unpredictable in a manner that, that they know how to hurt you, right? Versus the protomolecule might not have been able to realize what was, on an emotional level, what was important, but demoralizing your the, the, um, the opposition is more like what Marco would be able to, to do. But yeah. Scary stuff. Stuff is a Bruin. I thought it was interesting to have that... That contrast between... Avasarala and... Um, shit, what was that guy's name? I literally forgot. They said it multiple times in this. It's the Admiral, but I, I, I forgot his name. There's a lot going through my head. Anyways, but her and the, the Admiral... With that moment in the, in the war room, I'm not sure if either... Christian changed what she was going after, or maybe this is now they're just not on the same page. I, I'm not too sure exactly. Um, but, yeah. How did, how would Naomi, Naomi get out of this, I wonder? They can't get close, but they already are trying, and I wonder what happens if they stop short enough by getting her distress call. Like, why would this the signal change is an interesting point, I guess, right? Like, it's automated. That's very... That's probably also part of it you could decipher from it, is seeing how it changed, but it's the same thing. It's cutting in and out deliberately, meaning that it could be the work of... Um, you know, it's an automated message that is now shifted. It's very weird. Hopefully they pick up on that. I assume because they're in that world, they, they, they are more accustomed to noticing things like that because of the normalcy of the message and things like that, so... I don't know. I'm excited. Things are heating up. For a second there, I thought Naomi was almost going to deliberately, like, leap out of the thing at them or something and then blow the ship up. I don't know. But I wonder if she's going to be able to possibly figure out a way to, like, kill power to the proximity switch or something by 
deliberately shutting off the pa power and air and the engine to everything in the ship and then it like using that there's no internal battery cell for the proximity switch and the bombs that it actually by putting herself in danger like that she then is put on another timeline like or time or clock um you know what i mean but yeah that'd be that'd be pretty that'd be pretty wild and i think pretty cool angle to take but um yeah thank you guys for sticking around this long another fantastic episode things are only heating up more and more can't wait to to see the next one and uh yeah don't forget to like and subscribe if you guys want to see the next one as well if you can't wait either and uh yeah see you guys in the next one